I mean, first you want to recognize that to the extent that we have a federal system, um, there were no other choices available, right? That we were going to have a federal system because the colonies and states then long predated the Constitution and there was no way people were going to surrender that and create some new single national republic. Uh, nevertheless, there's a, you know, a variety of pro and con arguments about the benefits of federalism, which grossly speaking are essentially arguments about the benefits of decentralization. So, for instance, there are good reasons to decentralize when you've got a big national republic to decentralize decisions down to the state and local level. Um, it's easier for people to participate at the state and local level and to feel that their participation is meaningful. Um, the accountability of officials can be greater because they have a smaller number of constituents whose needs they have to worry about and there tends to be somewhat less variety uh, in what those needs are so you can get more accountable government at the state and local level. Um, you can have greater experimentation and more different kinds of policies that can satisfy more people. If you have to have one policy for everybody, you can't satisfy as many people as if you can break them into more discrete groups and have different policies and satisfy smaller majorities within each polity and so on. So those are good reasons for decentralizing and then there's some good reasons for centralizing. Um, the very diversity of interests can, as Madison argued, um, you know, dilute the ability of any group to capture and impose its will and, and lead to sort of more reasonable de deliberations and better policy from that perspective, um, you know, and, and so on. So, so the, the great benefit of a federal system is if it's properly structured, you can move different kinds of decisions to the level where they're most appropriately made and get better policy all around.